Mike Haynes and his wife thought they'd found the perfect balance of city and country life about 10 years ago when they found the Chalk Bluff neighborhood off Golson Road, where it crosses Elm Mott. We thought so when we were looking at the house and, you know, the fire department was right up the street and there's a fire plug right over on the corner. Well, you know, that's a, that's a bonus. Ten years later, the fire plugs went dry a while back and the Chalk Bluff Volunteer Fire Department, after a 37-year run, disbanded Wednesday. Their tax revenues, their tax base has, uh, has diminished. Steve Hirsch of the National Volunteer Fire Council says some volunteer departments have a bit of an identity problem. Some of it is our fault, too. Now, I really like the fact that uh, the fire station that you're showing there in the background, it says volunteer fire department. And if we don't tell them, sometimes they don't know that it's a volunteer agency made up of their neighbors that respond to the call for help. The idea of volunteer fire departments goes all the way back to Roman times. Many communities can tell the story of how a volunteer bucket brigade saved this home or that business. The National Volunteer Fire Council says more than half of all U.S. firefighters work as volunteers. And as their numbers have started to decrease, the need for their services, that has grown even faster. That's because the number of calls has increased as the number of firefighters to send grows smaller by the day. The NVFC noticed a few years ago the biggest drop ever in the number of volunteer firefighters. From 2015 to 2017, the council reports more than 132,000 volunteer firefighters went unaccounted for. Last year, the pandemic didn't do volunteer departments any favors as it brought many fundraisers to a stop. Reports of the troubles reached wider audiences, with New York forming a task force to deal with the problem of disappearing departments. In Texas, fire districts forced to consolidate did their best with limited resources. Such shutdowns could leave a community less protected or even unprotected, and the National Volunteer Fire Council says its people endangered. If somebody doesn't volunteer for that department, whether it's fire or EMS, uh, they're, they're called to their house that's on fire, uh, might take an hour for a fire truck to get there. If they're upside down in a car, it might take 45 minutes for somebody to get there. If they're having a heart attack, it might take a half hour for an ambulance. So the, the longer those call times go, uh, the less positive results we have from our incidents. What concerns Mike Haynes the most? Chalk Bluff, sitting at the back doors of Waco, Lacey Lakeview, and El Mott, and within sight of the front door to Whitney, Quilla, and Golson, we'll see more people move in, bringing with them a greater demand for emergency services. This is a growing area and we need some fire protection out here. What to do? Chalk Bluff could get a bit of a band-aid for its problem, while others try to tackle the bigger, more systemic, smoldering problem of volunteer fire departments on life support. A look at possible solutions in our next report. In-depth, in McLennan County, Dennis Turner, 25 News.